Hello, we're going to do in this problem the 2018 AMC 10A problem number 11. This is kind of a, a fun problem. It actually contributes to perhaps your understanding of a problem on the B test, which was problem number 9, which had some similar concepts involved. So it's one of the rare times that something from the A test also appears to contribute to your thinking on the B test. When seven fair standard six-sided die are thrown, the probability that the sum of the numbers on the top faces is 10 can be written as n over 6 to the seventh, where n is a positive integer. What is n? Well, we can quickly analyze what they give us here. 6 to the seventh, uh, there's six outcomes for any roll of the dice, and if you're rolling seven dice, that's 6 to the seventh. So in other words, this is an unsimplified probability. We're just looking for the number of ways that you can get a 10. And if we count all those up, then we will have the correct answer. So uh, first off, it's important to think about where 10 is relative to the minimum value. The minimum value you can get is 7, which would be 1 over 6 to the 7th, because you have to roll all 1s. Then how could I get to 10 if I take away one of these 1s, I'll have six ones, and then I'll need a four. So then how many ways can I roll this with the dice? It basically is a placement of four in seven different positions, so you're going to have seven uh, places for that to happen, seven outcomes that would make that occur. Um, next up, we're going to make the four go down to three, and if we make it go down to 3, we're going to need 1 from somewhere else, so we'll put a 2. Um, this one can be thought of as 7P2. It's uh, basically pick two places and the order matters. So you will get uh, 7 factorial over 5 factorial, which is 42 outcomes. Okay, uh, the last one that you can do would be if we reduce this by uh, 1 again, to make it 2, and we had four ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 2. 6 plus 4 equaling 10. So how many ways can this occur? You can think of this a couple different ways. Um, the first way I would just do is combinations now. 7 choose 4. The 7 places to pick four ones, uh, it's, it's equal to, if you thought of the 2, 7 choose 3. Basically, choose where the 1s go, everything else is 2s, or choose where the 2s go, everything else is 1s. These are equivalent, so it's fine. Um, you'll get 7 factorial over 4 factorial, 3 factorial. That will be 7 times 6 times 5 over 3 factorial, which cancels the 6. So 7 times 5 is 35. 35 and 7 is 42 doubled is 84. Hi, in this video we will be doing the 2018 10A problem 12 which was also the 12A problem number 10. We're going to solve this in two ways. The first way is, I think, a, the best way to solve it, or the best way I've come up with so far. Um, the second way is a little longer, but it's kind of your oh crap plan. Like, what do I do when I can't think of the best way plan? And both ways are good. You should know them. If you get to the end of the test and you're still not confident in your answer, you can come back and check using the second method to verify. So here's what the first method looks like. Um, we're just going to use graphing. Um, you do need to know, for this problem, the absolute value of a difference. The absolute value of a difference is the, the difference itself, a minus b, if a is greater than or equal to b, and it's b minus a if a is less than b. So we're going to apply that here. You're going to get System 1 will be x plus 3y equals 3 combined with the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y equals 1. This would be if the absolute value of x is greater than the absolute value of y. Then we don't need this. The second one will be x plus 3y equals 3, and you just flip it. Absolute value of y minus absolute value of x equals 1 for when the absolute value of x is less than the absolute value of y. We proceed to graph. Now you might say, I've never graphed something that has two absolute values. Well, the best tool for graphing when you don't know what you're doing is a t-chart. So we're just going to do a t-chart. Um, if I, we'll just do a mental t-chart, I think. 
If I plug in x is 1, what does y have to be? 0. So we can put 1, 0 on our graph. If I plug in negative 1, y will also have to be 0. So we'll put that here. What if I bump x up to 2 or negative 2? Then y can be bumped up to 1 or negative 1. So at 2, 1 will have a point, and at 2, negative 1 will have a point. And same at negative 2, negative 1. And it looks like we're going to get two V shapes. Let's kind of confirm. Let's do one point in between. What if X was 3 over 2, 1.5? Then Y would be 0.5 or negative 0.5. And you would be right here and right here. And it seems pretty clear that all the points in between are going to fill in. So again, when you don't know how to graph, do a T chart to get an idea of what it looks like. Because you don't typically graph something like this in most school math classes. Now we graph this, uh, you're going to get 3y equals negative x plus 3, so y equals negative 1 third x plus 1. Go to 1, go down 1 and 3 to the right, and you're going to be right here. It's going to pass through like this. Now these two will never intersect, but you've got one point here of intersection, and these two will eventually intersect at a second point. So, so far from this system, we have two. Now we go to the other system. So this, it should stand to reason, works just like this one, right? If y is 1, x is 0. So it's going to have a point here. And if y is 2, then x is 1 or negative 1. So it's going to do the exact same thing, but on the y-axis, kind of making a big x in the middle of the graph. And we can now see that this line that we drew is the same line for both systems. So you're going to have your third point of intersection here. Now we're going to cover a second way that you can do the problem. Um, the answer, by the way, was C3. Okay, so uh, let's go to the second method. Um, we erase this. No graphing for this one. You are still going to need uh, these two systems, actually. But there's a second way that you can break it down, and that is uh, absolute value definition is that it's x if x is greater than uh, or equal to 0 and negative x if x is less than 0. If you're not sure about the negative x, just consider that x is a negative number. So if I put negative 2 in here, the result is 2, which is negative negative 2. Fair enough? Okay, so we use that here. So there's going to be four scenarios for each of these. This is a very tedious method. Like I said, it's not ideal. But it gets the job done. Um, so if x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, then you will get exactly what you see here. x minus y equals 1 along with x plus 3y equals 3. If x is greater than 0 but y is negative, um, then you're going to get uh, this is going to change to a negative y. So it would be x minus negative y, which is x plus y equals 1, and x plus 3y equals 3. If x is negative but y is positive, then x becomes negative x, and y stays positive y with the negative sign in front. And we'll also have this here. And the last case is if they're both negative, x less than 0, y less than 0, you'll get negative x minus a negative y, which is plus y equals 1, and x plus 3y equals 3. So then you're just going to solve all of these systems and make sure they obey the constraints. So uh, for this one here, we're going to add straight down to get 4y equals 4 and y equals 1. That doesn't work because it says that y is less than 0, so we disregard this. If you're smart about it, it can still go fairly quick. Um, run a negative through this one, negative, positive, negative, add down to get 4y equals 2, and y will equal 1 half. That is greater than 0. Plug back in now to get negative x plus a half equals negative 1. Subtract a half to get negative x equals negative 3 halves, and you get x equals 3 halves. That is a solution, So because they're both greater than 0. Next one. Negative, 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 add down, 2y equals 2, y equals 1, no good. Next one, uh, add down, 2y equals 4, y equals 2. This time it's good, 
because y is greater than zero. We plug in here to get negative x minus two equals one, negative x equals three, and x equals negative three, which meets the requirement. So we get a second solution here. I'm not going to go through all of these to save time in the video, but if you were to go through them, you would get one duplicate that you already had over here. Uh, you would also get one unique solution. So that's three solutions. The answer is C3. Okay, and continuing on to the 2018 AMC 10A Problem 13, which was also the 12A Problem 11. A paper triangle with sides of length 3, 4, and 5, our favorite, uh, inches as shown is folded so that point A falls on point B. So this A onto that B, remember it's paper. What is the length in inches of the crease? Now there's no crease drawn for you in the problem and it's not folded for you. One tactic you can use is don't be afraid to bend or fold your test. So uh, you might be able to reason out exactly what the crease is going to look like in here. But what I would do, just to be sure, is just take the A, fold it over onto the B, flatten it out, make sure A is right on top of B, and then flatten the paper out. Unfold it, and there will be a crease. Now, when you do that, it's going to have the midpoint here. Obviously, A is going to have to fold over the midpoint. That just makes sense. And it's going to be what is the perpendicular bisector. It's going to be what the crease looks like. Okay, and that just makes sense. The perpendicular bisector is the collection of all points equidistant from A and B. So, uh, we progress. Let's call this D and E. And since this is a perpendicular bisector, you can make this 5 over 2 and this 5 over 2. Now, the 4 is not A, it's A, C. And from here, I hope you already know what we're about to do. We're going to make this 90 degrees. Don't forget that that's 90 as well. And since A is part of both triangles, this one and the large one, we have similar triangles. Similar triangles is a must know on the test. It comes up way too often, like once every year or two years at most. So uh, we're going to write A, D, E. I like to write the similarity. It doesn't take that much time and it makes sure you're not going to make a simple mistake. The next triangle also has to start with A, but C will be the second letter and B the last. C so that the D and C 90 degree angles match by AA similarity. So now we're going to do AD, which we know, over AC, which we know. That is 5 halves over 4, which is 5 eighths. You just multiply these two in the denominator. Now, we're looking for the crease, which we now know as DE, so we're going to look at DE, which is the second two letters, over the second two letters here, DE over CB. I'm not even going to write it. We know that CB is 3. Bring the 3 up to get 15 over 8, which is answer choice D. Okay, now for the 2018 AMC 10A problem number 14. What is the greatest integer less than or equal to this expression. Um, it's got a few answers down here. Uh, there's many solutions to this problem. You can look several up on AOPS. And the one that I like the most, I think, is to set x uh, less than or equal to 3 to the 100 plus 2 to the 100 over 3 to the 96 plus 2 to the 96 and simply multiply by this denominator to have x times 3 to the 96 plus 2 to the 96 less than or equal to 3 to the 100 plus 2 to the 100. Now we're going to use kind of a little trick. We're going to go ahead and just think about the answers. If I try 81, uh, that's 3 to the 4th. If x was 3 to the 4th, if I was to multiply 3 to the 4th times this, I would get 3 to the 100. However, 3 to the 4th times this would be more than 2 to the 100. So we can see right now that 81 is too big, and therefore it has to be A. Okay, and continuing on with the 2018 10A problem number 15. Two circles of radius 5, that's these two, are externally tangent to each other and are internally tangent to a circle of radius 13 at points A and B, as shown in the diagram. The distance AB, and since it talks about the distance AB, you should probably draw it in, uh, can be written in this form. Once you get to a point where it says can be written in the form, you can kind of stop reading until the end. Basically, find the distance. 
So we start at the center of this circle, and we're going to connect right, in general, for circle problems, connect their centers. So if I connect through the center of this circle, it will hit point A, and over here will hit point B. And we have this center and this center, and we can connect the centers of these circles as well, and you will get now similar triangles. I'm going to call this like C, D, and E. Now it says that these are five, and this is five, and so the radius of this CA is 13, then this up here must be eight because DA, also a radius of the small circle, is five. So now you can use the ratio of CDE to CAB. It's going to be eight over 10 has to equal 13 over AB. Um, cross multiply or simplify first, 4 and 5, 4 times AB is equal to 65, and AB equals 65 over 4. So now answer the question, M and N are relatively prime, again it just means they have no common divisors, positive integers, they are, what is M plus N? 65 plus 4 is 69.